ESLint is a tool for validating JavaScript code that you write in your code editor. Let's discuss what ESLint is, how it works, and then set it up inside of our code editor. First though, let's do a quick demo just so we can figure out what ESLint really is and what it's doing, it, doing for us. You know, I wanna convince you that this is an interesting tool that you should want to set up. So I've got some just arbitrary file here, you know, just a single function. I declare the function and then I execute the function. So right now everything looks good. I don't appear to have any syntax errors. So, okay, yeah, this looks pretty good. I'm going to introduce an error now inside my code, just a very subtle error. You'll notice that I am declaring a function called average and then I invoke it down here. So the subtle error that I'm gonna introduce is I'm just going to rename this thing to capital A, average. And the instant I do, I get a whole bunch of red popping up inside my code editor. And if I hover over this error right here, I know the text is kind of small, but I'll read it for you. It says, average is defined, but never used. And then down here, average is not defined. And so both these error messages are very helpful for helping me just kind of figure out, hey, I just made a big typo within my code. I declared average with a capital A, but then when I try to use it, I've got lowercase a. So this function is, in theory, not defined. So this is the purpose of ESLint. It runs inside my code editor and it detects or recognizes whenever I make either a syntax error or an error like, you know, basically reference a variable that does not exist. So I can fix this error up by going back to lowercase a and we're back to normal. Of course, ESLint does not only do uh, trying to figure out if you're referencing a variable that doesn't exist, it'll also pick up on say, you know, a dangling operator like so. So I've got a dangling divisions, division sign here and we get a nice error message that says, it looks like something right here went a little bit wrong and we can, you know, reasonably easy figure out that, okay, we probably made a mistake here. I also want the, you know, divided by two. Or let's say I misspell a return. All right, fantastic, doing the same thing here as well. Just letting me know that I made a very subtle mistake that I should fix before I move on with my application. Okay, so that's what ESLint does. I hope that I've kind of given you an idea that yes, this is something that's useful, something you might want to use and set up inside your application. I used to look down on ESLint a little bit. You know, I always thought personally like, well, if I'm a real engineer, I would be able to pick up typos like this before I try to run it in the browser. And that's not a very realistic attitude, you know? And at the end of the day, everybody makes mistakes some number of the time. And the sooner you fit, find and fix those mistakes, it just means you're all the more productive. So personally, I think that there's a lot of benefit to using ESLint and not a tremendous amount of downside. Let's change gears now and talk a little bit more about how ESLint works and how to set it up. So this is the one downside to ESLint. I'll tell you that right now, it's the one downside. Figuring out how the thing works and how to set it up is a little bit of a nightmare. And well, that's kind of evidenced by this really scary looking diagram that I've got on the screen now. So we're gonna talk about exactly how ESLint works, at least on the kind of setup side of things. Do take note that I'm gonna frame this discussion uh, for using ESLint with the, our Atom code editor. So I use Atom. You might use Sublime or VS Code or WebStorm or Vim, whatever it might be. The setup for all of those uh, different editors is gonna be very similar, just some very slight differences. So again, let's just you know, kind of frame the discussion in that regard. With ESLint, there's two phases of setup. There is editor-specific setup, which is kind of above this long line right here. And then there is project-specific setup as well. Oops. So we're gonna jump around on this diagram just a little bit. We're gonna start off first at the Atom Editor up top, and then we're gonna work our way down uh, to the bottom here with this big box with all these rule things in here. So when we install Atom as our code editor, Atom has a fantastic ecosystem of different packages that we can download and install inside of Atom to enhance the behavior of the editor. One such plugin that we can install is called simply Linter. That's all it's called, not ESLint, it's just Linter. Linter is some underlying functionality inside of our code editor, inside of Atom in particular, that allows us to plug in, and that's kind of what I'm trying to symbolize here by this ESLint going into this you know, white box right here, we can plug in different linters. So ESLint is not the only linting system out there. There are tons of other programming languages and many other languages have linters of their own. So for Atom, 
we've get, we get this very generic, very multi-use case linter plugin that just has some idea of how to uh, show errors to the user on the screen. And that's all it really does. So we have our linter plugin. And on top of that, we will install ESLint. ESLint is the actual plugin. It's the actual module that parses our JavaScript code and applies some rules to it and tries to validate, hey, did they you know, make a mistake in here? Did something go wrong? If so, I need to produce some type of error message and show it to the user. So that's the purpose of ESLint. It parses our JavaScript code and then it sources or creates the error messages to show to the user. So both the linter that we install and ESLint are what I kind of refer to as editor-specific settings. You install them once, like forever, and you're done. You just install linter once, you install ESLint once, and you're done, that's it. On the flip side are project-specific settings. So moving from project to project, you know, maybe you've got a uh, project at work, and then you've also got a project at home, like a side project. And your work project might be very uh, legacy like ES5 code, but then the project that you're working at at home might be cutting edge ES6, ES7, lots of really fancy syntax. So to accommodate for these different projects that you might have, you can wire up what is what I kind of refer to, I shouldn't say this is an official terminology, it's what I refer to as project specific configuration. So we can configure ESLint and the rules that it uses to validate our JavaScript code on a per project basis. To set up ESLint on a very specific project, we will add in some amount of configuration for just a specific project. And we'll talk about ex exactly what form that takes when we set this up inside of our code editor. The purpose of this config file, it is a file that we create, is to tell ESLint that we want to use some number of rules to validate our JavaScript. So at the end of the day, when ESLint runs, ESLint by default, by itself, if you just install it and run it, it does absolutely nothing. There is no built-in validation inside of ESLint. You have to specify some number of rules that you want to use to say to ESLint, hey, when you're parsing everything and you're figuring out if you know, anything's going wrong, please reference these rules. I wanna make sure that the developer is following all these different rules. So if I flip back to Adam really quick, and let's say I remove a semicolon right here on line two, I get an error message and the error message, I know it's very small on the video, but you can see here very small, it says semi right here. So if I click on semi, it'll pop open my browser and it will take me to the rule called semi. Semi is all about making sure that you use semicolons within your code. So here's a good example right here. Hey, please make sure that you use semicolons and you can read all the documentation and hear all about it. So for any project that we might be working on with ESLint, we will need to specify some number of rules. Now, of course, as a kind of endline developer, you don't have to specify all these rules one by one. There are a ton of preset configurations out there online that you can just download and install. They will kind of bundle together a reasonable rule set of different validation rules. And you can just immediately start working without having to worry about you know, adding in 30 rules before you start actually writing any code. So for the config side of things, usually you will pull in some already pre-bundled set of rules to validate your JavaScript code. Okay, so that is how ESLint works, or at least the, the again, the setup side works inside in a nutshell. Let's continue in another video and talk about how we set up ESLint with a number of different code editors. Mm -hmm.